All right, here we have kind of a special topics video to help supplement your, your digital media knowledge. And it's about CMYK color separation. So looking at these slides, this will give you some, some background information. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. They don't use B for black because, and they don't use B for blue, so you don't confuse them. So cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And they are quite different than blue, red, yellow, and black. Cyan and magenta are, are very particular colors, and they are the primary pigment colors, the colors that can mix to make any other color. So how do we do this in printing? Because we only have these inks. A basic color inkjet printer only has these four inks. And they're printed on white paper. So you'll see on the proof sheet here in the corner, that's cyan, that's magenta, that's yellow, that's black on white paper. So how do you get the illusion of green and orange and all of these color mixes? Well, it has to do with how closely these dots are placed to each other how much they overlap with each other, and the opacity of the ink. The inks are not 100% opaque. So as they overlap, they create new colors. What varies in printing quite a bit, depending on whether it's an HP in road. So it animates, you can see the little about this artist. These are the, the different methods that are out there in the world today looking at their Behance portfolio. So this is Theodor Histov. You get to these slides just by looking at assignment six, and then you'll see this link right underneath it. Because you might want to apply this to your poster. So this was created and called the bin day technique. And these bin day dots were named after Benjamin Day, who was an illustrator and printer. And it's like pointillism, which was a, a post-impressionist, you know, scientific way of mixing color at the end of the 19th century. But this is mechanically done. So you don't have to physically change how you mix color. You just have to tell the computer how to separate out these dots so that they overlap just right. So the two most popular ways to do it are what's called an index dither or sometimes called a sand diffuse pattern, which is tries to look random. And then a halftone pattern, which is a more kind of vintage 60s retro looking way where it's what's called a half drop pattern, like bricks on a wall. Every time you move one brick down, the whole set of lines moves by half. At least for black, that is true because it's a 45 degree angle. So they, they layer up to give you these different illusions of color. And then again, it's the angles that are most important and the angles I'm going to be testing you on. Black is always at 45 degrees because it's the most obvious. And when you add color, you always keep the other colors 30 degrees away from black. So the next closest are cyan at 50 degrees or magenta at 75 degrees. And then yellow is always at zero degrees because yellow is the most noticeable. So yellow does straight verticals and horizontals. So how does it affect digital artwork today when we have printers that can do this so well that we don't see the individual dots? Well, we often want our contemporary digital art to mimic old printing techniques. Sometimes we want to do that to be able to control the printing a little bit better. So using halftone dots is something that's in a lot of illustration as a way of supplementing flat color, duotone color, full spectrum color. And you can see it extensively in the movie Into the Spider-Verse. I have a, a link to all of that production art and some of their decisions there. But these halftones really made it feel like a comic book movie. Even though even comic books are printed on clay-coated paper now that you can't ever see the dots. Even gray scales are always printed in full color when you can afford it because it gives you so much more depth of value. 
So this gray rock is actually made up of all of these different print angles. So this is actually the same as we saw before, but this is another way you can write it, where black is always at 45, cyan is at 15, but you can also write the angle of 15 as 105, magenta is at 75, and yellow is at zero, which you can also write as 90 degrees. By layering them and offsetting them that way, you'll get these beautiful little roses. And these are called Gaussian roses. If you don't get the angles right, you just get a mess. All right, so you can see that on our digital coloring handout, it's kind of the final step that you can play with, separating out your colors. So now let's apply it. So you could see that I already used a bit of a halftone pattern. I just overlaid this diamond halftone from Pixabay as part of my background. But what if we actually want to separate the colors that are here, that are on the poster as it is? That's a little bit more involved. And what I would do is I would open up a flattened image of the poster, or here I'll do it. See how uh, this is a large resolution file, so maybe I'll, I'll just do it on the JPEG. So what I'd like you to do to try this out on either your spot illustration or on your poster, anything you've digitally colored, is to take your flattened version of it, just your JPEG version of it or your PNG version of it, and we're going to create a duplicate. And so I'm going to very quickly say file, save a copy, and I'm going to write CMYK in front of it because this is an experiment. And I'm gonna show you how I do it professionally. And then I'm gonna show you what's involved in that. And then show you how, how you can mess with it in a few different ways. I'm gonna close the PSD because I only want one file open in Photoshop for this. And then I'm gonna take this flattened image and I'm gonna use an action that I prepared. So I go to Window and Actions. Actions in Photoshop are programs that you write in and you have access to all of my actions that I've created through the class Dropbox. And the most interesting action, probably the most useful to me in my professional life is the one I created for color separation. It doesn't make any creative choices. It simply runs it through the, the professional pre-print steps but it does it with a pretty big dot. I think I do it at, at 45 dots per inch. So I'm just gonna hit play on this action and you're gonna see what it does. It's gonna generate four different files, one for each color, actually five different files, one for each color, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and then one that combines them all. And there it is, just like that. So let's look through the different layers. I intentionally offset it here so that I have to place the dots by hand. And that's because I like to play with the offsets to kind of mimic quick, fast printing. And you'll see in layers, I have control of each of these. Not only do I have control of each one, you can see that the, the half tones for the black are at 45 degrees in a half drop pattern. And when it gets darker, you'll see that it reverses so that the negative space gets filled with black and the dots remain white. So half tones are pretty complicated. The yellow, I print right underneath the black and I keep that at, at zero degrees or 90 degrees. And then I'm just going to move it into place. Then the magenta, which is at 30 degrees, I'm going to move that into place. And then the cyan, which there's a lot of in this design with the blue sky and the school colors, that is at 15 degrees or 105. And when they all layer up, we get the illusion 
of the full color range, even with this really, really large dot structure. But what do we lose? You see how the black is just a combination of all of those. So we, we lose what's called the full bleed line art. So that's why it's important to have that EPS file for all of your for all of your assignments because then we can layer that back onto it. So if I go to my Photoshop file, I can layer the vector for everything back over the top. Or I can just run separations on different parts of the process. So how did I get to here? It's a little complicated. That's why I make it an action to save the steps. But it's important to know how it works. So these are the individual layers that make up the combined. So we all we started with a JPEG. So what does my action do? The first thing it does is it separates the mode that we're viewing the image. Right now it's in RGB mode, which stands for red, green, and blue. Those are the lights in the screen that are creating the color. Because the light scale can show us millions of colors and the pigment scale of inks can only show us thousands of colors, we have to first change the mode of showing the image from RGB under image mode to CMYK. And when we do that, some colors are going to shift slightly. So I'm going to show you. So the vibrancy, especially of yellows and greens, will shift. That's RGB. You can see how it feels a little bit more intense, even on the projector screen, but definitely on my computer to CMYK, it will look a little more dead. It's important to know this because seeing something on a screen is very different than printing it with ink, right? Making an image with light is very different than making it with inks on white paper. So now that it's CMYK mode, I'm gonna separate it into channels. Channels are different than layers. Channels are actually the way that the computer sees the image. So, this is how the computer sees black when separated into CMYK. Different tones of black. So basically it's gray. This is how the computer sees cyan because a computer is digital. It's one or zero. So either the cyan, the blue light is turned on or it's not. But light, unlike ink, can be turned on at different um intensities right so where it's black that's where the blue light is turned on the most and you can see that very clearly in our logo here and where it's gray it's where it's turned on about halfway so let's just take the cyan layer i have to isolate it in the channel so i'm only showing the cyan then i need to change its mode from cmyk to grayscale and then that will discard all the other channels. Now, remember, this is like an ink wash print. This is not solid black ink. So how do I change this into solid black ink? I have to change its mode from grayscale to bitmap. Bitmap means that it can only see white and black, right? It's like the most basic kind of digital image. And I get to decide how large it's going to be. And my output is a professional output of 300 pixels per inch. So let's keep that. That's what my action does. And then you have to decide what method do you want to do this. This is the color separation. So I'm going to say I want to use a halftone screen. But I could also use the diffusion dither. I can use a pattern dither. I could do a custom pattern of stars. But I, I really like the halftone. So then it's going to ask me, how often do you want to see a dot? So I'm going to make these really visible. I'm going to keep them at, at 20. But you can make this, for professional printing, this would be like 300, right? And then you have to set the angle. Now I'm doing cyan. So the cyan angle is 15 degrees. And then I can pick the shape of the, of the dot. And I usually do ellipses because it gives a little bit more of fidelity to the color. But I can do rounds here just so we can see what that looks like. And when I hit OK, it converts it. 
You can see the rounds very clearly. 